How many sins have you committed? Way too many to count? Have you committed a great big pile of sins the size of a mountain? If so, has Allah got a deal for you? Most Muslims have absolutely no clue what their own prophet said about how Allah forgives them and rewards them with paradise. They tend to think that Allah simply decides to let their sins slide. He sweeps them under the rug, pretends they never happened. But that's just not what Muhammad said. Most Muslims don't know what Muhammad said because their leaders hide it from them. Why would sheikhs and imams hide what Muhammad said? Let's find out. Sahih Muslim, 7011. This is the Darus Salaam edition. It uses a different numbering system than the online edition at sunnah.com, but there are links to the sunnah.com edition in the description box in case you want to look these up. It was narrated that Abu Musa said, The Messenger of Allah said, When the day of resurrection comes, Allah, glorified and exalted is he, will give every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and he will say, This is is your ransom from the fire. When the day of resurrection comes, Allah will give to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian. That Jew or Christian is the Muslim's ransom from hell. Sahih Muslim, 70-12. Aun and Sayyid bin Abi Burda narrated that they witnessed Abu Burda narrating to Umar bin Abdul Aziz from his father that the Prophet said, no Muslim man dies, but Allah causes a Jew or a Christian to enter the fire in his stead. If you're a Muslim and you die, Allah will send a Jew or a Christian to hell in your place. Sahih Muslim 7013 is a similar hadith, but it's narrated by Qatada. Sahih Muslim 7014. It was narrated from Abu Burda from his father that the Prophet said, On the day of resurrection, some Muslim people will come with sins like mountains, but Allah will forgive them and will place them, the sins, on the Jews and the Christians. You can have mountains of sins, not to worry. Allah will take those sins and put them on the Jews and Christians, and the Jews and Christians will pay for your mountain of sins in hell. 110 Ahadith Qudsi number 8. Narrated Abu Musa, Allah's Messenger said, On the day of resurrection, my Ummah, nation, will be gathered into three groups. One sort will enter paradise without rendering an account of their deeds. Another sort will be reckoned an easy account and admitted into paradise. Yet another sort will come bearing on their backs heaps of sins like great mountains. Allah will ask the angels, though he knows best about them, who are these people? They will reply, they're humble slaves of yours. He will say, unload the sins from them and put the same over the Jews and Christians. Then let the humble slaves get into paradise by virtue of my mercy. Here Allah orders the angels to unload the great mountains of sins from Muslims and to put those mountains of sins on the Jews and the Christians. So, if you're a Muslim with a mountain of sins, does Allah simply forgive you? No, someone has to pay for what you've done. Who pays for your sins, according to Muhammad? I do. Or some other Christian does. Or some Jew does. Historically, there are way more Christians than Jews, so it's much more likely that a Christian will be paying for your mountain of sins. This means, of course, that in an interesting way, I'm your savior. Your prophet says that your salvation comes from me. I'm your ransom from hell. I pay for your ticket to paradise. Do you want me to be your savior? Do you want some other Christian or a Jew to be your savior? I'll go ahead and say it. A little thank you, David. Thank you, Christians and Jews, for rescuing us from hell 
would be nice. According to your prophet, Christians and Jews are literally paying for the most expensive gift you've ever been given. Show some gratitude. And you're welcome. Now, I ask you Muslims who are watching, why is this the first time you're hearing about any of this? Why don't your leaders ever tell you what your prophet said about Jews and Christians paying for your sins? Well, because their goal isn't for you to understand Islamic theology. Their goal is to keep you confident so you don't leave Islam. And they do this by lying to you in order to give you a false confidence. For instance, since the Bible was copied by hand for centuries, there are textual variants in the manuscripts, spelling differences, copyist mistakes, and so on. The same is true of the Quran. The same is true of any book that human beings copied by hand. But for decades, your leaders lied to you and said that the Quran is different from every other book. Every copy of the Quran in the entire world is exactly the same, right down to the letter. Zero textual variants. It was a total lie. But they wanted you to feel like there's something special about your book to give you a false confidence. When it comes to salvation, they do the same thing. They say, look, Christians claim that Jesus willingly died on the cross for your sins. But how can one person pay for the sins of another person? Isn't that completely unjust? That's why Islam is better. In Islam, people pay for their own sins. That's just. They obviously can't give you this false confidence, this false sense that Islam is somehow more just than Christianity, if you know what Muhammad said about Allah punishing Jews and Christians in hell for your sins, so they hide it from you, and they lie to you. This raises an important question. If your scholars are lying to you about matters as important as salvation and the history of your book, what else are they lying about?